Hey, it's Marie Forleo, and you are watching Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. You know, if you've ever been in a position where people have told you that you don't have what it takes to go for your dreams, this episode is a must watch. Amanda LeCount is a professional hip hop dancer, choreographer, actress, singer, model, influencer, and body positivity advocate whose videos have received over 70 million views. Amanda has her own movement, hashtag breaking the stereotype, which promotes body positivity and the belief that any body can be a dancer. She's been on The Ellen Show, Dancing with the Stars, The Voice, and alongside Megan Trainer on the Radio Disney Music Awards. She's choreographed and danced for Ryan Blythe's Raise a Glass music video, appeared in Katy Perry's Swish Swish music video, and helmed her own national dance tour, Amanda LeCount Live. Amanda, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, of course. I'm very excited. We are excited to have you. So obviously, I stalked you for a while on Instagram. <laughs> you are so inspiring. I love your dancing, and I loved our connection, and I'm thrilled that you're here. So I would love you to take us back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. When did you start dancing? I started dancing when I was two. So pretty much like my whole life I've been dancing. Do you feel like like when you look back, whether it's video or images, like did you just kind of pop out? Like I remember when I was a kid, I see old home videos of uh -huh. like, you know, spoons and like moving it in my diaper. Was that kind of like how you were? I think yes, but there's one picture I have. I think I was like a year and a half, yeah. like very little. And I had big sunglasses on and I was like posing. <laughs> and I look back at that picture and I'm like, oh, I didn't know I was going to be a dancer, but I knew I was going to be a star. Yeah. Yeah. Something in the entertainment industry because I love being the center of attention, I guess, even when I was a year old. <laughs> and so I read that um, part of what inspired you was seeing your sisters on stage. Yeah. Tell me about um, that. So I have six siblings. So big family. And my two older sisters, they were into dancing. Yeah. And I would always go to class with them, but I wasn't dancing with them. And I would be looking through the window and I'd just be bouncing up and down. And my mom would see that. And I think she just realized that I really wanted to be in there with them. Yeah. And she enrolled me in like the combo classes, the ballet, tap, jazz. And I've been taking class ever since. Yeah. So, so. you knew it. So you felt it. Once you got in there, yeah. it was like, this is my life's passion. Definitely. So I also read that one of your earliest teachers shared that you have this ability to memorize choreography fast. And I'm so curious because as I shared with you when we were DMing back and <laughs> forth, you know, I started my dance journey. I never took a class until I was 25, which as you know, very, very late for the dance mm -hmm. world. And one of the things I used to beat myself up about was because I couldn't memorize choreography fast, but I have a feeling it's very different for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't – it's not something you can kind of – you can practice it, yeah. but it's either like you have it or you really have to work on it. Yes. And luckily for me, I kind of – have always just been really good at memorizing choreography. Yeah. And one year, actually, it was, I was maybe like 10 or 11 or maybe even younger. I had 17 numbers in, in one show. And I memorized them so easily. And that's when people were like, okay, that's like not normal. Like, I don't know how you're memorizing that much because my sister, who was in the same recital, was freaking out over having five routines. And I was like, that's nothing. Like, that's, that's nothing. But she was like freaking out. So I've kind of just always had that ability to memorize really quickly. That's so cool. So when you're in a class, is it almost like you see the teacher do the moves and it just feels like it downloads? Like it's so – this. Um, not quite like that. I think what happens is – I mean, after I do it like two or three times, I have it. But what really helps is when they play the music. Yeah. Like, because then when I hear the music with the steps, it's like, it just like connects and matches. So now every time I hear the music, I think of those steps. Interesting. So it's it's not like I can forget the step if the song's playing. It's weird. Yeah. But yeah, once I hear the steps with the music, it like clicks. Interesting. Okay, so something happened quite significant when mm -hmm. you were about 10. Tell us what you experienced. Yeah, so when I was about 10 years old, this certain studio director in Colorado, where I'm from, he begged me to come to his studio, like begged me, because he had seen me perform at competitions and stuff like that, and the dance world in Colorado is pretty small, so everyone knows each other, we see each other all the time, and he begged me to come to his studio, and my mom and I were like, okay, we'll, we'll give him a chance, like why not? And I had an amazing year. I won this, 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 whatever. It doesn't matter about that. But I did really good that year. And he asked to have a meeting with my mom and I. And I don't know about my mom, but personally, I thought it was going to be a check-in type of meeting. Like, oh, you did this this year, and this is where I see you doing going next year, and things like that. But 
that was not the case. And he sat down with my mom and I, and he goes, hey, like, I'm sorry, but Amanda's body type just doesn't fit my vision for my team. And kicked me off my team, oh, off my team, and kicked me off his team. And I was, people always ask me like how I felt in the moment. And yes, I was sad, but I was more like shocked that he even said that and like that came out of his mouth. And I was like, I did nothing like to deserve this. Like I worked so hard, I did so good. And like, he's kicking me off just because I don't have the right look, I guess, to be a member of his team. Um, and it was very hard to hear that, obviously, because that was kind of my first experience of someone telling me that like my body isn't right for dance, like yes. face to face. So it was really hard to hear that from someone that I kind of looked up to because yes. I was training with him for a whole year. I mean, we got pretty close and like to hear that from almost a friend was like, whoa. Really devastating. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I, I left, obviously, and, you know, my mom encouraged me to keep going, and it was hard. I wanted to stop at some point, stop dancing. Um, close in? Like, was it close to that experience, and do you feel like if you wanted to stop dancing, it was because of that comment? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it just, like, it was like, if he thinks this, then does every, is everyone going to think this? And, like, is it even worth me investing my time and effort and all this if, like, no one's going to give me a chance? It was like... Do I try? Yeah. Or should I try to find something else? And so tell me about that exploration in yourself at 10 or 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. How did you – because any one of us, anyone watching, if someone said that or something similar to mm -hmm. you at that tender age about your dream or even as an adult, if you're in your 30s or your 40s or your 50s and mm -hmm. someone who you trust, who you've worked with comes in and has a comment like that, any one of us would understandably pull back. Yeah. What – turned it for you where you were like, mm-mm. Yeah, I think it turned from me being like devastated and so like feeling so down and bad and all that to me feeling like confident. I think it was just, I realized there was like a switch in my brain that went from like, oh my God, I'm terrible. I should stop dancing to, oh wait, no, he said that, but I want to show him that I can do it. So I don't know what happened like in my head, but just one day I think it just like clicked for me and I realized, Wait, I like I can't let him like just like make me stop dancing. Like this is what I love to do. It's the only passion I've ever had. So it's like I can't just stop because one person that doesn't even matter said that. Yes. So, and so you kept going. Yes. You've also shared this. You've said the media tells us that if you aren't skinny, you aren't beautiful. This is especially true in dance, where mm -hmm. the underlying stereotype that is to be a dancer, you must be tall and skinny and Caucasian. And you were told by many people, peers, parents of peers, dance teachers, studio owners, strangers, even Richard Simmons, <laughs> that you were too fat to be a dancer. But mm -hmm. I am here and I've proved them wrong. You're so dedicated. You work so hard. And I think for any of us, no matter how much we believe in ourselves, to consistently hear hurtful words mm -hmm. is tough. How at this stage you're at now where you've had success, you're building your success, you are such a role model, how do you respond, uh, whether it's in person or even on social media when people have hurtful comments, or do you just move past them at this point? Yeah, um, most of the time I don't answer just because the reason they're doing that is for the attention. So I try really hard, no matter how bad it is, not to answer. Yes. But every once in a while, if I see something, I'll comment back, but not as like an attack to them. Like I'm never like mean and like, oh my gosh, like how dare you? I never go that route. Um, but if I do comment, it's always a witty comment or like a funny comment. Um, so for example, someone put, oh, we all know no one's ever going to book her. And I was like, you're right, only Katy Perry, Megan Trainor, and Ellen. <laughs> That's what I said. And I, oh, I love man. comments like that because it's not like I'm attacking them or their character or anything like that. It's just like, well, you're kind of wrong. It's just yeah. like, um, well. Factual. <laughs> yeah. And you're proving, you're responding through your own heart and through mm -hmm. the hard work and the success you're creating. Yeah. So make sure you know your facts before you try to come for someone. That's <laughs> This is why I love you so much. So following your dreams, no matter who you are, takes tremendous dedication. Mm -hmm. Tell me about when you guys were still living in Colorado and you and your mom would take these 16-hour round trips to LA mm -hmm. every weekend. What were you doing and, and what was that for? Yeah. Um, so when I was about 12 to 13, I want to say, so two years after the incident with the one guy happened, um, there was a dance crew called Latin Flava. 
And my mom was scrolling through Instagram and saw that. She was like, oh, she Amanda would be perfect for this. And I don't think she realized that like this is weird, but she sent the producer my videos and my resume that had nothing on it. Like nothing. It was like recital 2010. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like that is not a resume. Um, but she just, I don't know how she had so much confidence, but she sent in my stuff and was like, hey, my daughter would be a great asset to your like um, crew or whatever. And this crew had some of the best kid dancers at Casey Rice and Jordan Jones and Lexi Smith. Like, these were all big kid dancers at the time. And then she's sending me, like, this nobody from a small town in Colorado. I was like, okay, mom, sure, send it in, whatever. Um, but the producer actually came back to us and she messaged us and said, hey, I love your daughter. I would, I would love for you guys to come out and, like, rehearse and perform with us. And I was like... Oh my God, me and my mom, I actually have a memory. We were in the kitchen and we played um, Celebrate. Yeah. And we were dancing and we were like, woo! Because we were just so excited that I get like an opportunity in LA because that's a big deal. Yes. Um, but it was the rehearsals were every weekend and sometimes we had performances too every weekend. So we would drive 16 hours each way. So 16 hours to California and then 16 hours back. And I was not homeschooled. Many people think I was homeschooled. I w I've never been homeschooled in my entire life. And I just graduated last year. Wow. But I've always been in, well, I was in private school until sixth grade. But after that, I was in public school the rest of the way. Um, and it was very hard trying to manage homework and then dance routines and then practicing and then a 16 social hour, life. <laughs> yeah, each way commute. Yeah. But it just speaks to your dedication and it speaks to your passion and also your beautiful mom. Yes. Oh, my gosh. She is so supportive. She would, like, do anything just to get me on a stage for one performance. Like, she would do anything. Well, she loves you so much, and it's clear because you're so talented at what you do. Let's talk about, and I also love, actually, I want to I want to put on this for your mom for a minute. I love that she said, if you ever got a big head, that she would take you right back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she says that all the time because um, being in L.A., so many people get one big break, and they think, like, they're the best dancer to walk on the earth. And I'm like, okay, where were you a year ago? I'm like, you were nothing a year ago. And then all of a sudden, it just like switches in their head and they think that they're like a celebrity now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, like you need to bring that right back down. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> that's not cute. It's not a good look. And no one's ever going to book you if you're like a mean or rude or egotistical person. Like it doesn't matter how talented you are because yeah. there's 800 more dancers that are just as good or better than you. Yeah. So it's like you have to be a nice, humble person that's easy to work with and people get along with easily or else you're never going to make it. So she always always says that if I ever get cocky or start bragging or anything like that, she's just going to drive me right back home. <laughs> <laughs> That's good momming for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about social media for a bit. So I think both of us share something in common. We have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it. It's amazing because that's where I found you and we can connect with so many beautiful people doing mm -hmm. incredible things and find inspiration. And then, of course, there's some tough stuff on there as well. How have you found – it, or are there any practices that have helped you have a healthy relationship as a creative, as a performer, as someone really putting your stuff out there? And by the way, just want to also say, every time you share pictures and posts, I'm, you bring so much joy to my feed. Oh, thank you. Yeah, really, truly. Um, I would say that um, social media is like a love-hate relationship because I love it because it's giving me a platform to like inspire so many people that I would never have been able to even like connect with had it not been for social media so that's the amazing thing about it is that you can connect with people from literally anywhere yeah. and I think that's so amazing but the negative is I think for me at least people are so quick to comment on social media because there's not like a real consequence it's like they can like respond back or whatever but it's not like it's gonna like really hurt you or like change your life in any way so they're like oh I'll just comment like doesn't matter blah 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 but it's like I don't think they realize how much that could like hurt someone because even just like reading a message if it's bad about you like it hurts a lot I don't care what anybody says it like it affects you no matter how big you are no matter how successful you are it still affects you because it just hurts to have someone like tear you down like that no matter how big you are or how successful um but as far as like staying positive with the comments I always try to think like yes social media there's a negative side of it but the positive is so much like bigger and more important than the negative. So it's like, yeah, I'll get hate comments, whatever, telling me I should stop dancing, blah, blah, blah. But then like the one comment that's like, you inspired me, or like, I took a class today because I saw your video, or something yes. like that. It's like, that's 
that's worth the 10 hate comments. Like, whatever. I don't care. You have so such you a great perspective of, on that. Yeah, you yeah. kind of have to look at the positives. And you are reaching a lot of people and inspiring them. Let's talk about, in November, mm -hmm. a really big milestone for you. So you were on the cover of Dance Spirit Magazine. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that experience and what it meant. Yeah, so Dance Spirit Magazine is probably the biggest dance magazine in the country. Um, it's huge. They've had the best dancers, obviously, on the cover. I mean, Brian Friedman, like the biggest people in the dance industry on the cover. And actually, last year, it was a goal of mine to just be mentioned in the magazine. I literally wrote it down, like, just to have my name in Dance Spirit Magazine. And I'm going to pause <laughs> you for one minute because we've talked about this a lot, the power of writing down your dreams, mm -hmm. the power of just writing it down. So listen to Amanda. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, and my mom, I was actually in dance class at my school, and my mom came into the dance class, and I was like, my God, what are you doing? I was like embarrassed. I was like, what is happening right now? Why are you here? Um, Cause it's not like we have parents coming into our class every day. That's not, that's weird. Yeah. Um, and she pulled me out and I was, at first I was like, am I in trouble? I was like, what did I do? I was like, I don't think I did anything. And she pulls me outside and she's like, yeah. So uh, I was just wondering if you want to like go to New York and shoot a dance spirit cover for November. <laughs> and I was like, I literally fell to the floor, like fell to the floor and just bawling my eyes out. And I was like, oh, God. Um, just because, like, that's so crazy because five years ago, like, I would read these magazines and I was, I thought they were so cool. And, like, the people on the cover were, like, celebrities to me. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And, like, then to realize that I'm going to be on the cover and, like, be one of those people, it was, like, full circle. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, they've had maybe, like, two, like, size eights on the cover, but never someone, like, my size. So it was really cool to kind of be one of the first dancers or one of the first plus size people to be the cover of a dance magazine that's like athletes or like yes things like that because obviously people think automatically like if you're not skinny then you're unhealthy and if you know blah blah, blah you're skinny then you're fit which is it's not speak the case to at that all. yeah speak to that please but, I know you're passionate about this. yeah because people always see me and they're like oh you need to eat healthier you need to go on a diet you need to exercise more and I'm like Okay, well, clearly you are new to my Instagram because I <laughs> dance every single day for hours and hours. Um, and I eat, I'm a very healthy eater, actually, and people never think that. They never, they're like, yeah, you eat McDonald's every day. I'm like, no, that's not the case. Like, I eat very healthy and I exercise all the time. It's just the way my body is. I can't really do anything else, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm healthy. I went to the doctor. I'm completely fine. And, you know, people are still always going to have their opinion, but I know that I'm healthy and, I mean. And you're a badass. Like that, like, I mean, the first time I saw your dance, I literally sat back in my chair and I was like, <laughs> she is so fierce. I love her. That's all I had to say. So let's talk about your hashtag, which I love, breaking the stereotype. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, breaking the stereotype is pretty self-explanatory, but it's all about kind of being different yeah. and showing people that you don't have to fit in to be successful. Yes. Because, I mean, like I've said a billion times, people always tell me, you know, I'm too big or I'm too fat to be a dancer, or I'm not skinny enough or things like that. But, I mean, I've proven them wrong. I mean, all the things I've gotten to do, I just got back from performing at Coachella with Lizzo, which is... Which was amazing. Thank you. Which you is a fabulous. huge deal. I mean, dancers like dream of performing at Coachella with artists. Yes. And I'm only 18 years old. Yes. So that's like pretty cool. Um, and so I created Bring the Stereotype to kind of inspire people to do things that they never would think that they would be able to do. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say, but it's just all about inspiring people. I love it. I love it because I feel like... So many of us hold ourselves back because mm -hmm. we're so afraid of what other people could say or even the mean voice in our own minds mm -hmm. that says, we're too young, we're too old, we're too skinny, we're too fat, we're too black, we're too white, we're too something mm -hmm. and can't do our dreams. Yeah. And I love, love, love that you take such a strong stand for all of us breaking the stereotype. Mm -hmm. You've been on a lot of incredible stages lately. Mm -hmm. You've been doing some really cool things. Any lessons that you've learned for yourself as a performer from – from doing things with Katy Perry, from doing things with Lizzo, mm -hmm. anywhere? Yeah, um, as far as performing, I would say, I don't know if this really has to do with like performing, but something I've learned throughout like my career in performing and dancing with artists and things like that is, and this actually goes more for like the audition part of it, yeah. is that 
per, like performance is always more important than like technique. Mm-hmm. No one's watching the show and being like, oh my god, her leg wasn't straight or whatever. No one cares. You're like, oh, she didn't go on the right count. Who's in the audience thinking that? And I feel like dancers overthink that way too much. Like, I've gone into auditions before and, like, messed up so badly. Like, badly. But I was performing, and I was having a good time, and I made them, like, feel something. I either made them happy or something like that. And so they gave me the job because I was performing. Yes. And if you're in the audience, they just want to see someone performing and having a good time. Yes. They don't care about the dance. You could stand there, but if you're, like, having fun, then they don't care. I love this lesson because I feel like it's applicable to so many people in our audience no matter what we're doing. It's like Mm -hmm. in our own minds, we can strive for this perfection, right? Mm -hmm. And trying to get it right. But when you see a being, being themselves, having fun, emoting, having Mm -hmm. that energy, it makes you feel something and that's what we all want to feel. Yeah. I love that. So one of the things that you say, and I want to wrap with this, I think this is so awesome. We're going to make it our tweetable. If you love it, do it. It's as simple as that. So for the folks watching, and we have folks all different ages from 195 countries, all kind of things. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them about following their dreams? Yeah. I I would just say that people always tend to be like, oh, I wish I could do this, but this, 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 and but this, this, this. It's like never let yourself get to the butts. Just be like, I want to do this, period. And I just do it. Like, I don't get why they don't do it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, that's not really fair. I get it. It's scary. <laughs> it's scary to put yourself out there. I love there. it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I don't want to make it sound like it's so easy just to, like, yeah. do whatever you want. That's right. But that's kind of just what you have to do. Yeah. Like, of course, it's going to be scary and nerve-wracking and, like, oh, my gosh, but what if this happens? It's like, so? It's like, at least you tried. At least yeah. you, like, gave it a shot. Yeah. Because I'd rather, like, do something I love and then, like, kind of embarrass myself than, like, not do it and just, like, regret not doing it. I am with you all the way, girl. I embarrass myself on a daily basis. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Amanda, thank you so much for being here today. So before you leave, I'm <laughs> curious if we can do a little bit of dancing. Would you be cool with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, baby. All right, we're going to change and we're going to get our dancing on. All right, everybody. So Amanda and I are here, and she's going to teach us us like i'm gonna be doing it y'all gonna be laughing at me because i'm silly but she's gonna be the one teaching us a couple of eight counts we're gonna try it a few times then we'll rehearse it and then we're gonna try and dance it so do it with me amanda take it away mama yeah don't be scared it's not that bad it's, i'm not gonna like sabotage you okay <laughs> so start off you're gonna jump on your right foot come together same thing to the left jump together you're gonna cross your feet arms down to turn around yourself Arms go up above your head, and then you squat down. Let's do that one more time. Set, we go. Right, together. Left, together. Cross, turn, up, down. Yeah, work, go off, okay. So we just did up, down. You're gonna step on your left foot and do a hop, hop, where your arms are crossing, right in front of left. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the right, arms go down. Then you step to the left, do a little baby circle. Same thing to the right, right, baby circle. And let's stop there for a little bit. (laughs) It might be a lot, but I promise you, you'll get it. So, from the beginning, we go. Right, together, left, together. Cross, turn, up, down. Hop on the left, and right, and left, roll, right, roll. Yes, I can't see you, but I bet you're doing great. So, from the top, we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Right, and, left, and, cross, turn, up, down. Left, and right, and step, circle, step, circle. Yeah. Are you having fun? I'm having so much fun, I love it. (laughs) As long as you're having fun, you're doing the dance right. Um, Okay, so let's go on a little bit. It's not too hard. So we just did left, around, right, around. You're gonna step to the left facing the right side. Your arms go back, then you circle around. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the left, but a little bit quicker. Left, around. Then you're gonna step on the left as your left arm goes up and you do a small body roll. Then same thing on the right. Yeah, then after that you only have one more eight count. That's it. So (laughs) it's not too long, it's not too hard. Just a fun little dance that we wanted to do. So we just did left from the new part, right? And you go back, around, 
and back around left, right. Yeah, good job. Yay. <laughs> okay, let's put all that together from the top and then I'll add the last little icon on. And then we're done. Okay, so we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Right, together, left, together, cross. Turn, up, down. Left and right and left, around, right, around. Back and circle and back, circle, left, right. Yeah! Okay, we're doing it! We're doing it, guys! Um, so I'm gonna add the last A count on and then we'll do it a few times from the top and then we'll try out some music. Okay, so we just did left, right. You're gonna go around to the left, then you're gonna go down and do a left head roll, and then last two steps, you're gonna go right knee in and left knee in. And that's like a, oh, I'm cool. Like a little groove. <laughs> And that's the end of the routine. Yay! Woo! So much fun. <laughs> now if we could just all get it in our heads, but we're gonna do it several more yeah, times. Yeah, we're gonna do it more times, don't we'll, worry. We'll do it together a few, and remember this is a video, so you can rewind it and try it again. Yes. <laughs> I'm teaching this pretty fast, so yes. feel free to rewind as many times as you like. But from the top, we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Right, together, left. Together, cross. Turn, up, down, and left, and right, and left, around, right, around, to the back. And around, back, around, left, right, and circle, and down, and knee, Woo! and knee. Oh, she was going too full out. I was, I'm gonna full out it. <laughs> okay, let's do it two more times like that without music, and then I'll show you guys with the music. Okay, five, six, seven, eight. Right, together, left, together, cross, turn, up, down, and left. And right, left, around, right, around, to the back. And around, back, around, left, right, and circle, down, knee, and knee. Yeah! <laughs> um, okay, I actually think we're ready for music. I think, I think we can do music. Amanda is so, this is why I love her. She's so confident. <laughs> I'm not that confident, but we're gonna do it because it's fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, So if you're moving at all, that's a win. Right. If you're trying it all. If you're all, even trying this, I applaud. It's a win. It's a win. <laughs> Wanna Kay. go for it again? Yeah, one more time. Okay. us. Hopefully we're going to do more dancing in the future. Where can people find you if they want to follow your beautiful yes. journey? Um, you can find me pretty much all my social medias are Amanda LeCount and Amanda L-A-C-O-U-N-T. Um, yeah, I hope I find you guys on my page. <laughs> yes!
All right, you guys. Well, that was tons of fun. Now, Amanda and I talked about a lot, and we also danced, but we're really curious. Out of all the conversation we had today, what's the biggest insight that you're taking away? And most importantly, how can you put that insight into action starting right now? Leave a comment below and let us know. Now, as always, the best conversations happen over at marieforleo.com, so go there and leave a comment now. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to our email list and become an MF Insider. You're going to get instant access to an audio I created called How to get anything you want, plus some exclusive content, special giveaways, and personal updates for me that I just don't share anywhere else. Stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world really does need that special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time on Marie TV. Hey, you having trouble bringing your dreams to life? Well, guess what? The problem isn't you. It's not that you're not hardworking or intelligent or deserving. It's that you haven't yet installed the one key belief that will change it all. Everything is figureoutable. It's my new book and it launches September 10th. And you can order it now at everythingisfigureoutable.com.